wedding. So you can imagine my surprise this last Wednesday when she casually mentioned on a phone, during a phone conversation that I would be giving a toast. I responded like any best friend would and said, are you freaking kidding me? It's Wednesday, I have two young kids, this isn't going to happen. But six pages later, I have it. <laughs> I first met Amy while in high school. She was good friends with my brother, and as a younger sister, I got to tag along. I was fully in my hippie Grateful Dead days, so you can imagine um, my excitement when I watched Amy pack up a VW bus to head around the country for three months with my brother. I knew I had a roper in as my good friend. Looking back now, I realize that was one of the best decisions of my life. Our friendship has lasted through many stages. It started in high school summers, where we worked in Y Camp by the day and rollerbladed in togas by night. In college, we bought puppies together, which was probably one of the worst decisions I've made. <laughs> we lived together, danced together, and learned about life together. And our fr friendship has continued to deepen since college, which for me has been six years, and for Amy, six days. <laughs> no, but really, is it just me, or has Amy been in college forever? <laughs> She's even told me that she keeps getting older and her friends stay the same age. <laughs> there you have it, right? Something Amy and I have done a lot of is travel. We spent a month in Oaxaca, Mexico. We followed fish up north, down south, and out east. Which reminds me, you still have a warrant out for your rest in Arizona. <laughs> I would avoid that state on your trip with corn. <laughs> We've also gone camping, hiking, and backpacking. You can really learn about someone. You can really learn a lot about someone from traveling. A couple of examples. One hot day in May in Davis, Amy and I decided to go for a quick and relaxing backpacking trip, just one night. Amy pulled out her book and all of her maps and she picked Mount Lassen, and I said, sure. We drove all the way there, and when we finally got there and looked up, we saw that the trailhead was covered in snow. There would be no backpacking in Mount Lassen. So once again, Amy got out her book and her maps, and she found another great place to go to. We drove there, and when we finally got there and looked up from our long conversation, we noticed that we were in the middle of a totally deforested forest. All the trees were cut down. Matter of fact, we got to, uh, we couldn't even go any further because there's a tree in our path, so we couldn't go there. Amy took out her books and her maps again. I probably should have taken the lead at this point, but I didn't. <laughs> and she said, how about Mendocino, Sarah? And I said, hmm, I don't think we're that close, but sure, Amy, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> so we went all the way to Mendocino, and when we finally got there, we decided we needed some celebratory beers because we had been driving all day. So we, we load up our backpack with a bunch of bottled beers, not smart. And we think we're just going to hike in a mile or two. And we finally, after a mile or two, we see a sign that says, first campground 10 miles in. We finally get there, our beers are warm, our bodies are exhausted, we go to sleep, we wake up the next morning, we dump out all of our beers and hike out. <laughs> Another trip that comes to mind is when we were going to Bear Valley for a music festival. I was the driver and Amy was once again, once again the navigator. We were traveling with my sister this time and we had been traveling for what felt like forever. We even drove over this incredibly scary passage on this cliff that had one lane in the deep fog. When we finally made it over the pass alive, we came to Bear Valley. We saw the sign that said you are now entering Bear Valley, and about 10 feet later, we saw the sign that said you are now leaving Bear Valley. Hmm. We got out of the car, we looked around, we didn't see anyone, we didn't hear any music. So we called our friend Abe. Turns out we had gone to the Bear Valley in Southern California. You probably never heard of it. We were supposed to go to the Bear Valley by Yosemite. I've had many other experiences like this. I've had many other experiences like this that I can't really remember for reasons I can't really disclose here. But during these trips, we spent more time in the car than we did at our actual destination. We laughed, told stories, danced, listened to music, talked about our dreams, worries, experiences in life. I know many of us here have had priv the privilege of traveling with Amy. She is easygoing, hilarious, patient, fun, and thoughtful. So Corin, there are two things I've learned through countless trips with Amy. Number one, it's not the destination that matters, it's the journey. It's not the getting there, it's the going. And Corin, you couldn't have picked a better person to take a lifetime of journeys with. And I also learned that there's a difference between Amy's love for maps and her skill in using them. <laughs> Keep that in mind as well. <laughs> it's been an honor to see my best friend become my two-year-old son's best friend. Amy is such a kid at heart, and it's been wonderful watching her love and play with my son endlessly. She has taught him to blow bubbles, squirt water from a spray bottle, and even though my house is now constantly covered in bubbles and waters and water, I am still thankful for the attention and love she has given him. He calls her Mamie and he talks about her every day. 
When she calls, I can't even say her name on the phone, because if he finds out I'm talking to her, he grabs the phone, starts yelling Mamie, and either screams that he can't see her or starts kissing the phone and running away. <laughs> Every time our dog runs to the door barking, he follows closely behind and yells, Mamie, hoping it's her at the door. <laughs> if we ever go out, and this is true, if we ever go out and he sees a tall, lanky woman, especially in a vest, maybe a little bit dirty, <laughs> he runs right up to her, kid you not, and says, Mamie! <laughs> and I have to explain it. Person. It means the world to me that Amy is so involved and dedicated to my children, and I look forward to being a Mamie to her children sometime soon. So, Corin, once again, I have a few pieces of advice for you. Number one, keep her fed. <laughs> it's like having snacks in your bag for a toddler. If you see her hand come up to her forehead, if she takes that deep breath, if she can't follow the conversation and she's not really sure what you're going to do next, you need to give her some food. You let that blood sugar go too low and you both are screwed. Number two, you need to give her space on the dance floor. She's got those long legs, those long arms. She has the same dance. <laughs> I remember one time we were at my friend's wedding and she was doing her little dance that she likes to do. I'm sure you'll see it later. And out of nowhere, she flew past me. There were arms and legs everywhere. She collapsed on the floor. She actually got up so quickly and gracefully that I think a lot of people around me thought it was an intricately planned dance move, but I knew better and I was scared. So give her, dance, give her adequate space. Number three, she isn't the best speller. Don't let her draft any important documents or write any bills. I don't want your energy bill going to PJ and E. Amy, thank you for being an inspiration to me the past decade. Thank you for listening to me all these years. Your smile lights up the room and your compassion makes our world a better place. From riding the bus in White Camp together, to streaking on the beach, to playing in mud together, to hiking through Butno, to late night conversations, to countless mornings sipping coffee on her front porch, to biking through Davis, to swimming in pristine lakes and freezing rivers, dancing at festivals, listening to Poisonwood Bible on tape at night, huddling in our tent, watching deer eyes all around us, to searching for hours for the tree where we hung our bear bag, to gardening, to moving our kitchen into the living room, through breakups and many trips, to fighting for our lives in the ocean that day, to blowing bubbles for Charlie, diaper changes on sidewalks, and many hysterical moments, you have been my rock, my keeper, my soulmate, and my sister. I have cherished every moment I've gotten to spend with you and look forward to a lifetime of journeys with you. Corin, thank you for loving Amy for exactly who and what she is, for sharing her dreams and working hard to make them come true. So if you can raise your glass with me. So here's to Amy and Corin, to love and laughter and adventures. May your love be as fruitful as your garden. Amy and Corn now want to open up the mic to anyone else who might like to share a quick anecdote or a toast. And while you're thinking about whether you want to uh, make that plunge and get in front of a microphone or not, I'll just say something really quickly. Um, I've been married for 24 years now. And I have a 23-year-old daughter, and we were using protection, so be prepared. It doesn't always work. That 2% on the label, that's my daughter. <laughs> but she's a treasure, so it doesn't always work. Um, I would only add uh, one other thing to what uh, your other father, Berkowitz, said. 